Hi, heathens. Welcome to part two of trickle-down economics and how it does not work. If you haven't watched part one, you might want to go do that. Otherwise, let's get into it. Now, people that simp for trickle-down economics love to point to Ronald Reagan in the 1980s, and they say that deregulation and tax cuts at the beginning of the 1980s are what drove economic recovery and took us out of a recession. Not quite. Now, Reagan did cut taxes significantly, and the top tax rate of 70% for those making $108,000 a year or more dropped to 28% to those making $18,500 a year or more. He also cut the corporate tax from 46 to 40%. Now, what they don't as frequently say, and what most economists would argue is the actual cause of the economic recovery, is that he increased the government spending by 2.5% every year. This nearly tripled the federal debt. And that spending mostly went to the defense industry, which created this temporary economic boom. But once that was done, it led to another severe recession. Now, when we move on and look at George Bush with his Economic Growth and Tax Relief Reconciliation Act, he cut taxes. And by November of that year, we started to come out of the recession, which was great. But then unemployment rose by 6%. And unemployment is something we call a lagging economic indicator, which means that we're not going to see the effect until later because it takes time for companies to start hiring again. And so that is a good indicator that whatever policy occurred wasn't actually driving a lot of economic growth. Bush then went ahead and, as a response, cut business taxes, and that seemed to work. But the other thing that's happening here is that the Federal Reserve also lowered the Fed fund rate from 6% to 1%. And that is likely what drove the recovery. Um, but at best, what we can say is that it's not clear what was driving what, but the Fed funds rate is a tool that the government uses to do just that. So the U.S. has never restored the highest marginal tax rate to the pre-Reagan level, and we've only continued with our deregulation, especially of financial markets. And from 1989 to 2019, the average American family really only saw a negligible increase in their inflation-adjusted income. But during the same time period, the top 1% increased their wealth by $29 trillion. Between 1979 and 2005, after-tax household income increased by 6% for the bottom fifth. But it increased by 80% for the top fifth, and it tripled for the top 1%. Theoretically, trickle-down economics should help people across all income levels. But as you can see, it doesn't. It exacerbates wealth inequality. And even the International Monetary Fund released a report saying that it doesn't work and that if we want to drive the economy, then we need spending in the middle to low-income sector.